Welcome back to Fire to Fork. Over the last few months, I've been compiling a list of kind of camping hacks and cooking hacks and just techniques that will really help you to level up your camp cooking. There are so many simple things that take no extra effort that really, really, really do help you. So, start off with, the thing I see so often is people with their jar of either garlic or ginger. Now those jars taste rubbish. They've got this kind of, um, uh, this preser preservatives and stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of extra stuff in there. Garlic lasts weeks. Ginger lasts weeks. It's totally fine. Just bring them on your camping trip. Bring fresh garlic and fresh ginger. Chuck them in your camp box, you will not regret it. Everything will taste better, I promise. Now, quickly, in this episode, somewhere in this episode there is a code word. If you comment that code word down below, you can win a copy of my book, my cookbook. And I'll throw in a sticker and a patch and that kind of stuff as well. So, comment the code word on YouTube. Don't send it to me as an email, as an email. but get too many of them. Number two, heat. Now, this goes for both hot pans and cold pans. I see too many people putting the pan on, waiting 30 seconds and then putting their food in there. It's not hot enough. If you want to sear a steak, you need to let that pan get ripping hot. And if there's oil in it, you let that oil get ripping hot and then you sear your whatever you're putting in there. Uh, look, for other vegetables and stuff, it doesn't matter as much. In fact, most vegetables you can start from a cold pan. That's totally fine if you're doing garlic or ginger or anything like that. The other one you can start from a cold pan is bacon. Bacon actually cooks better if you start with a cold pan and not a hot pan. So yeah, which is counterintuitive. Uh, trust me on that one. And I'm gonna do another video on like another little bacon hack. So we'll get to that later. This next one's all about flavor and getting that smoky, fiery flavor into something in a camp oven. A camp oven isolates your meat or whatever you're cooking from the flavor of smoke and, and, and flame. So what I recommend is before you get your bit of pork or something you're gonna do your pulled pork with, chuck it on the fire um, and give, a, give it a bit of flame, give it a bit of char, and then slow cook it in the camp oven. That will infuse that beautiful, smoky, charry flavor throughout your meal, and it will really level it up. Now, pasta tips. Number one, always salt your pasta water. Um, some people say it should be as salty as the sea. That is not true. It should be about, about a third as salty as the sea. Um, I'll put up the ratio on the screen, actually. Now, um, next, I always see people put oil in their pasta. I don't do that because the oil gets hot and it cooks and it just doesn't taste as good. Extra virgin olive oil should always be used fresh. Um, so what you do is you cook your pasta like normal, then you put your olive oil on it and then stir it around so that it doesn't stick together. But most of the time, to be honest, it doesn't really need it. And the other one with pasta is make sure you actually read the packet because every pasta with every different thickness and different this and that, there's no one size fits all. Some need to be cooked for nine minutes, some need to be cooked for three minutes, some need to be cooked for 15 minutes. Check the back of the packet. It'll always have a very precise and very good measurement for how to cook that pasta perfectly and follow it. Now, I alluded to the high temperature oils and low temperature oils and like olive oil. Olive oil is a low temperature oil. In fact, olive oil should be used mainly as a garnish. Occasionally you cook with it, but largely you don't. I cook with a high temperature oil. So something like rice bran oil or peanut oil, uh, something like that. And that is usually flavorless, but more importantly, it doesn't start smoking and becoming acrid and actually it becomes carcinogenic once it's you know gone too far past its smoke point. So just be careful with that. Use cooking oils and then garnish with olive oil. Okay, three little tips for rice. Number one, always start with cold water. Put your rice in your cold water, rinse it, then put your cold water in, a ratio of one cup of rice to one and a half cups of, um, of water, and you can scale that up obviously. Uh, next, when the rice is finished, you think finished cooking, don't just trust it, taste it, okay? Sometimes it can be a little bit, a little bit tough, and so just make sure you actually taste your rice. So many people don't. And the third thing is, once it's cooked, fluff it up. Get your spoon or your spatula or whatever, fluff that rice up, and that will stop it from getting sticking together and getting stodgy. Now, camp oven heat. This is a two-part, top and bottom. So, for the top, in almost all cases, you want about 70% of your heat on top of the camp oven. And that is simply because the food is touching the bottom of the camp oven, so it doesn't need that much heat underneath it because there's no, there's no distance for it to travel. It's, it's, on the hot, it's on the hot metal. The heat coming from the top needs to travel through a lot of air. And so in order for you to get fill that air and get that air very hot, you need to put quite a lot more heat on top. So, 
always have lots of heat on top. Uh, and also be careful if you do have um, something that's kind of tall, like a chicken or a big piece of meat, uh, make sure you flip that regularly if you do have lots of heat on top because it will start to burn the top that's the part that's really close to the top. Next, bottom heat. Now this is counterintuitive. You do not want your camp oven sitting on the coals. I use one of these, a uh, fire trivet, uh, but you can just use your grill plate or just some rocks or something like that. What you want to do is space your camp oven off the coals. The reason for that is that it doesn't smother the coals. The coals last a lot longer. Despite being further away from the coals, this will actually put out, it'll, you'll actually get more heat into your camp oven than not using it. First time I used it, I actually burnt my meal because I was not used to how much more effective it is having it spaced off. Now, next on heat control, make sure that you've always got a hot and a cold part of the fire underneath your grill plate, whatever kind of grill plate you have. Uh, so when you've got your fry pan, you can, that's your heat adjustment. You can slide it from the cool part to the warm part um, and vice versa to make sure that you don't burn your food. Now, again on heat control, make sure you've always got a collection of small sticks, sort of kindling sized sticks, so the thickness of your finger. They are amazing at getting flame into the fire. Now when you get flame into the fire, that is the best way to get rid of smoke because when you have flame, it suddenly sucks air into the fire and burns off the smoke and continues to basically pump the fire up. So don't go put a big lump of wood on there. It will smoke. Make sure you have small stuff. And that's particularly important when you're cooking because you, you can add extra heat under something quickly um, and you can remove, you know, if it's billowing smoke into your food, it's probably gonna ruin your food. So that's very important. Speaking of fire prep, make sure you prep your fire well in advance. Don't rock up, wait till seven o'clock and go, oh, let's have dinner in half an hour and then light your fire. Light it at three, light it early. Um, you want a nice bed of coals, you want a well-established fire. I mean, it's not always an option, especially if you travel with someone like Ronnie Dahl, who won't get you into camp till bloody forever. Um, but that is so important. And if you don't have time, I really recommend bring a little bag of charcoal, because if you light that charcoal, you'll have essentially coals in less than 10 minutes. Now, this is so simple, but so important. Cracked black pepper, freshly cracked ground black pepper. It tastes completely different to that pre-ground stuff and even, and don't even get me started on that pepper powder stuff, that's rubbish. Freshly cracked black pepper, get a pepper grinder, even if it's just a you know supermarket brand one, that's fine, but make sure you bring one. All right, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for watching. Merry Christmas or whatever you celebrate. Have a great break, have a great New Year's, stay safe. I'll see you in the next one, cheers.